And um, I want to ask you a question this morning. And I, I want... You can close the doors, somebody, please. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to ask you a question this morning. Does God hate certain people? So I want to take a survey. I want, to, I, I want you to answer that question for me. Uh, first of all, I want to ask you, how many believe that God hates certain people? Raise your hand. One, two, three, three and a half. <laughs> okay, now how many believe that God loves everybody? Raise your hand. I have some indecisions there. You know, they, they're not saying anything. Well, it's very interesting because some people say, well, God's nature, he can't hate. Well, can he love? Well, if he can love, he can hate. See, the thing about God's hatred is it's pure, perfect hatred. It's not hatred based on being hurt or emotion or feelings. But God can and will hate certain individuals. You say, Pastor, you have to prove it to me. So I'm going to ask Pastor to put up Psalm 5, verse 5. And while he's doing that, I want to just say to you, if you believe that God is just love, that's all he is, just love, okay, you're unbalanced. See, the philosophy that the church has kind of fallen into, and I know many people have said this, I have said this in the past, God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. How many believe that? Raise your hand. Okay. Do you know that's a universalist statement? You know the universalists, they're the ones that believe that because of God's infinite love, no one will ever go to hell. Go to hell. Because of God's infinite love, he loves the sinner but he hates the sin. That's a philosophy of universalism. And it's crept into the church of Jesus Christ. Yeah, Pastor, I can, I can also see your minds of flowing like a river thinking of John 3.16. I'll get to that in a moment. But look at Psalm 5, verse 5. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Now, there's what's called a, a metonymy. It's like an idiom. But I found that many that interpret that in that way, a word standing for another word, that they misunderstand those scriptures. Like the Bible says in Proverbs, he hates a lying tongue. Well, he doesn't hate it. Right? I'm not talking about a literal tongue. And the emphasis seems to be put on the lie. But let me ask you a question. When God sentence a sinner, does he sentence the sin or the person? Hmm. Hmm. It's very interesting. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Now, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. Now, how many know that his love is infinite? His love is unchanging? But see, the problem isn't with God. The problem is with humanity. 
See, God proved to you and I that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's unconditional love. However, however, if you had someone who loved you and, cons and, com and would always treat you badly, would cheat on you. Well, let me ask you women, because you women are pretty you know, emotional and sensitive. Sometimes the guys, are, you know, we get hard and all that stuff. But if you had a husband or a boyfriend and you fell in love with that person and behind your back that person was seeing somebody else, would you still love them? You may still love them, but you would no longer want to be with them especially if they could not be trusted. Hello? If they can't be trusted, and then you find out instead of one girlfriend, he's got five girlfriends. That'd be pretty sad, wouldn't it? I don't want to be with a person that has five girlfriends. You, you understand what I'm saying? So God expects that when he shows somebody his love like God, the love of Christ, his only son, who he sent for you because he loved you. And you reject that love. What are you saying to God? So the problem isn't really with God. The problem is with us. He hates all who do. And that word do is a continuous, repeated do. It's not like somebody that did something and repented and never did it again. But it's someone who is constantly doing iniquity, sin. You take a thief. When does a thief stop becoming a thief? When does a liar become, stop being a liar? Huh? Nope. When he starts telling the truth. Not necessarily. It can be a half-truth. As a great philosopher once said, a half-truth is better than a full lie. Not true. A thief stops becoming a thief when he has a heart of restitution to those he's stolen from. See, there always has to be an action to our repentance. So if we, if we cheat God on something, and then we come back and say, God, I'm sorry, you need to go back and fix that. Hello? You can't just go on and say, oh, it's okay, it's, it's all right. No, you've got to go back and fix that. Like the Bible says in Revelation, to I think it's the Laodicean church, it says, you go back and do your first works. You repent, go back and do the first things that you were supposed to do. Psalm 11, verse 5. Says, the Lord tests the righteous and the wicked. And the one who loves violence, what's it say? His soul hateth. See, God in his infinite wisdom has the, the ability to love and to hate because he's God. And whatever he hates, even though we don't understand it because we see through a glass darkly, God has every right to because he's just and he's holy. I understand the universalist view that says that in the end, everyone's going to get saved because of God's infinite, unending love. I understand why they believe that. Because they leave out the justice of God. That God is not just love. God is love, but he's not just love. God is just, he's holy, he's righteous. 
He expects holiness. Well, the Bible says, without holiness, no one will see God. Those that love violence, his soul hates. See, I can't see me telling somebody that I love them. I can't see myself saying that I love Ariana, and I do. She's my little sweetie. She's my uh, jet ski buddy. I can't say that I love her and then lock her into a, a, a big container and fill it full of water and watch her drown and die. But God can. I asked a question earlier. I said, does God love everyone? And everyone raised your hand. Well, did God love all those people, the, the, the millions of people that died in the flood? Come on, don't get quiet on me. I mean, you're scaring me. Didn't God love those people in the flood? But what took place that canceled that love? They rejected him. What does the Bible say? In the days of Noah, it will be like in the last days. What was it like? The earth was filled with violence. He that loves violence, his soul hates. But yet God still loved all of those people that died. Leviticus 20, verse 23 says, Moreover, you shall not follow the customs of the nation, he's talking to Israel, which I shall drive out before you, for they did all these things, and you can go back in Leviticus and read sometime, and therefore I have abhorred them. You know what the word abhorred means? To hate. Hello? Wow, I never saw that in the word before. It's there. But you can't interpret it in your own thinking, in your own mind, because you'll, get, you'll, you'll, you'll drive yourself nuts. How can God do God can do that. If he shows the emotion of love, he can also show the emotion of hate. But it's a perfect hatred. It's a righteous hatred. It's a justified hatred. A lot of our hatred is, is, is different. Well, you say, well, pastor, you know, the Bible says to love your enemies. All right, well, let me ask you a question. Is Satan your enemy? Do you love him? Hello? I hate him. I hate him when I see what he does to people. When I have to go to a funeral of a, of a young person that overdosed. See, I'm on the overdose um, task force for Fairhaven Police Department. And I go out and I, I go out and help those people that have overdosed on drugs through the opium crisis that's going on. And they've died. And the paramedics or the police have brought them back to life. And what we do as a team, I'm going out Monday. What we do as a team, we go out there and we offer them re, you know, references of where they can go to get help. They need help. but they're going to die. I don't know why people think that they can do drugs and alcohol and think it's not going to affect them. It will affect you someday. Just got the news that two recreational marijuana facilities are opening up in Massachusetts. Oh, goody, goody, now we can buy it legally. <laughs> no. Therefore, I abhorred them. I'm trying to give you a balance of God here. Don't just think he's all love and huggy, 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 wuggy, duggy, mooky, mooky, poopy, poopy, poopy. He's not. When you read the book of Revelation, do you, 
Do you see Jesus opening the scrolls to unroll the wrath of God upon people? See, that's why you have to know that God loves you. How do I know that God loves me? How do you know that God loves you? I'm going to ask you that question this morning. How do you know, and I'm not talking just up here. I'm talking about how do you know that Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit loves you? How do you know that? Could be a lie you believe. Maybe all of that Christianity stuff is just a joke. Made up. How do you know? Yes. Yes. Because the Bible says he demonstrated his love that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's a historical fact. Nobody can deny that. Even the Muslims will tell you that there was a man by the name of Jesus Christ and he lived 2,000 years ago. Even the historians will tell you that. It's written in history books apart from the Bible that Jesus Christ lived on this earth. The parts that they don't believe is that he rose from the dead. Now, being also a constable, and I go to the courts a lot, and I sit in court, and I listen to the arguments, and I listen to the judge, and I listen to the prosecuting DA and the defense attorneys and all that stuff. You can get pretty wise at what goes on. And being in law enforcement that way, I could tell you that people try to get away with everything. And the prosecuting DA, he wants to win the case no matter what. So he'll ask questions to try to trick the person up, to try to twist them, their words around so that they get a different meaning so that whoever's making the judgment will see that they're not being consistent. Let me get back to my message. In Proverbs 6, starting with verse 16, The Bible says, there are six things does the Lord hate. Say it with me. These six things, say it with me. These six things doth the Lord hate. The Lord hates. Ooh, I thought he didn't hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. You know what the word abomination means? Detestable and hateful. Next verse. A proud look. Now, how in the world can God hate a proud look if he's not talking about the person? You ever see a proud look? Oh, yeah, I've seen a proud look. You can see pride all over them. Nasty. A lying tongue. God hates this? He hates it? No. He hates the person. Now, I'm not talking about somebody that falls and slips and makes a little lie, you know, tells a lie. But someone that consistently lies and consistently tell, doesn't tell you the truth, guess what? They don't have God inside of them. Oh, they have a God inside of them. Who's the father of lies? That's who they have inside of them. They can't be honest with people. They can't tell the truth. They always got to make a lie to make somebody believe something that's not true. That's what a lie is. Making someone believe something isn't true or is true. That's a lie. 
Hands that shed innocent blood. God hates hands? No. It's the person. Next verse. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Uh-oh. Wicked imaginations. Boy, I'm telling you, if that girl looks at my boyfriend again, I'm going to smack her upside the head. I see her over there looking at my boyfriend. I'm going to smack her upside the head. I saw a cute video on uh, YouTube. Uh, you know, they pop up now and then, these, how people put them on Facebook and stuff. And what it was is there was a guy, and he was eating an ice cream cone sitting at a table. And there was two girls over there, right? And he's, 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 he's eating ice cream, but he's happy. You know? And he's licking the ice cream, and he's looking over at the girls, you know, he's licking the ice cream. And the girls are, oh, ooh, look at him. He's looking at me. Ooh, he's making a pass at me. Look at him. And he's looking all, you know, nice at me. And, they're, and, you know, they're all like, you know, and they're, they're like, you know, throwing him a kiss, you know, and, uh, and, uh, this one, one, one lady, she's looking at him, and she's, like, getting all warm, you know. She's opening up her blouse a little bit to get cooled off, you know. And then he gets up, and he takes out his cane, and he whips it out. He's blind. And the girls look at him, and they, they start laughing because they realize that he wasn't flirting with them. He was blind. He was just enjoying his ice cream. See, but we can evil surmise. That girl may not even be looking at your boyfriend. She may be looking on the other side of your boyfriend, but he's in that direction. A heart that devise wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. You know, there's some people that are always in trouble. They, I mean, they cannot not be in trouble. You know people like that? Always. I know who you're thinking about, too. <laughs> okay. Begins with a B. <laughs> but it seems like trouble finds them. They're always in a crisis. I think of the story of the Three Stooges. I love the Three Stooges. And Curly, Moe, and Larry, they're in a boat, and they're fishing. They're trying to make money. And all of a sudden, they realize that their boat has a leak in it. And Moe tells Curly, he says, Curly, he says, get this water out of the boat. So Curly, you know, he's looking around the boat, and he goes, eh, oh, a water letter router. And he gets a drill. And he starts drilling holes in the boat to let the water out. Trouble seems to find some people. And then the boat starts sinking. That's not how you let the water out. That's man trying to solve a problem. In ignorance. Feet that run rapidly to evil. A false witness who utters lies. And watch this last one. And he that soweth discord among the brethren. Gossip. Hello. Did you hear about so-and-so? You hear what happened to him? Oh, I got to tell you all about it. Did you hear about, you know, you know what happened to him? Come on, man, I'm going to tell you all about it. 
How about, did you hear what happened to so-and-so? Come on, let's pray. Let's lift that person up in prayer. Instead of talking about them. God hates that. Hello? God hates that. Hosea chapter 9, verse 15. I'm trying to give you God's perspective on this. Hosea 9, 15. All their wickedness is in Gilgal. For there I hated them. Can't get any clearer than that. There's no metonymy there. There's no idiom there. There's no uh, figure of speech there. Hello? All their wickedness is in Gilgal, for there I hated them. Why? For the wickedness of their doings. I will drive them out of my house. I will love them no more. <gasps> I thought he loves everybody. He does. But when you push God over the edge, if I can use that terminology, you know, we sing the song, His mercies are new every morning. But guess what? His mercy can come to an end. Oh, but the scripture says His mercy doesn't come to an end. What happened to the flood people? What happened to the thousands of Israelites that came against Moses uh, when he came down from the mountain? Uh, Nathan, uh, uh, Dathan, was it? Korah and Dathan? The Bible says the earth opened up and swallowed them all up. Where's God's mercy in that? Where's his love in that? He's still who he said he is. Do you find these verses a little hard to read? Do they make you feel uncomfortable? Well, they should. God hates sin, but he does not punish sin. He punishes the sinner. Sin cannot be tied up and thrown into the fire. Hello? Can't be put in a box or glued to a stick. It's rebellion. It is rebellion in the heart. It is breaking God's law. Sin occurs inside the heart and mind of people. Therefore, God must punish the sinner. Why? Because he's both holy and just. And the person who sins offends God. God's holy and just character will not allow him to ignore their offenses. As I said before, the universalists, they repeatedly say things like, God loves us all so much that he will save us all. He hates the sin, but loves the sinner. God is love and will not send anyone to hell. Does anyone believe God sends people to hell? Huh? I'm seeing no's and yeses. What is it? Is it either yes or no? It can't be both. I got one yes. Does God send people to hell? Anyone opposed to the yes? Oh, how about the scripture that says this? Don't fear the one that can kill the body, but fear the one who can cast both body and soul into hell. Uh-oh. See, when we read the Bible, we've got to read it balanced. We can't read it one-sided because, you know, the once saved, always saved. Guess what? God can't hate. Verse 
Praise the Lord. Universalists teach that God is so full of love that he simply cannot send anyone to eternal hellfire. There's also, you, you see universalist church, they're all over the place. Congregationalists, they have basically the same idea, same ideology. And all these big churches, you know, you go in. God, God's just love. But I, I want to just say this. It's nice to think that God's loving being, God's love being so infinitely great that all will ultimately be saved. That's a great thought. I wish it could happen. But it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think. It matters what God thinks. That's why we have to get on God's side, what God says. We have to understand what he says. You'll never understand God if you don't read the Bible. I mean, you know, it's so cool that we have Google and YouTube now that if we don't know how to do something, we can look it up and it usually can explain to you how to do it. In the same way, if we have a problem or we, we don't understand, or like Jen was saying, you know, sometimes you question, like, who God is. You wouldn't let your child starve, would you? Would you let your children starve? No, God won't let his children starve either. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed out begging for bread. Somehow, some way, God always comes through. How, can, how many can say that he's a way maker? Because you've experienced God coming to your rescue at a time when you were so low, at a time when you didn't know where to turn or what to do, and God stepped into your situation and he helped you. And he asks you to love him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. And you fight that every single day. I want to be with a person like that. You, you want to buy my lunch every day? You better believe this is going to be my buddy. She's going to be my buddy. You're going to buy me lunch every day? And, and, and uh, 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 Auntie Edith is going to make me uh, Portuguese soup for supper one day a week? I'm going over there. Hello? And Vicky's going to make her nice uh, linguiça and meat that she makes with that sauce and those potatoes. Oh, people are getting hungry now. Oh, my gosh, if you do that, I'm moving in. I hated them. For the wickedness of their doings, I will drive them out of my house. I will love them no more. And all the princesses are revolters. He will love us. He will love them no more. God is infinitely just. God can hate without sinful intent. And he can hate the sinner in a perfectly holy way, and still lovingly forgive that sinner at the moment of repentance. He, doesn't le he has a way that you don't have to stay that way. In fact, the Bible says, the wrath of God abideth on the children of disobedience. Some people, they can't ever make anything. You ever hear those people? Oh, nothing I can do is right. Everything I do is wrong. Everything falls apart. Everything just, I, I, can't get, I can't get ahead. Everything seems to be, well, you know why? You got it out of order. I mean, people in New Bedford, they do things out of order. There's so many single mother births in New Bedford. My cousin in Connecticut said there must be something in the drinking water. He said, everybody gets pregnant before they get married. 
That's not how it goes. We do have, society is training our generations and generations to do things backwards. God's demonstrated his love for us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How do we know that God loves us? Because the Bible says so. God said so in the Bible. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave. See, I can't tell somebody I love them if they're in need and I have the ability to meet that need. And I just say, oh, well. I can't say to somebody that's going to be alone on Thanksgiving and has no place to go and, can't go, and doesn't have money for food I can't honestly say that I can tell that person, well, you know, you have a happy Thanksgiving. Without saying, no, you know what? You don't have a place to go. You come to my house. Come on, somebody. And all of you know I do that every single year. This year we just got invited somewhere else, and, and uh, we're, we're cooking the turkey, though. And I'm bringing people with me. Brother Sam is coming home for Thanksgiving. He'll be here Tuesday, but he won't be here Sunday. He's leaving Saturday. So I'm going to try to see if he can get to, to see you sometime. I don't know if we'll be able to do that, but maybe Friday night or something like that. We can all get together and come over to the house and have a little something. I don't know. i got to talk to Linda first because she says, you always make plans without talking to me. You don't want to get on the wrath side of Linda, let me tell you. Hopefully you can see how it is that the hatred of God against our sin that makes his love toward us so incredibly spectacular. We used to sing a song, and I heard it on the radio, I think it was this morning, Such Love. Remember that, Remember that hymn? Such love, such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love. That God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. That even in the depths of our wickedness and sinfulness, God still loves us. But he can also perfectly hate us. He will love us when we receive his gift. If I told you, who can I pick on? I'll pick on Joe. If I could tell, say, Joe, man, I love Joe. And for Christmas, man, I got you 20 gifts. 20! Okay? Yeah, he's like, what'd you get me? Nothing. <laughs> I got 20 gifts for you. And I bring them over to your house, and I bring them under your, you know, uh, near your, near your stands there, that wherever you want to put them, and, and they're all wrapped with beautiful bows. And you know, I, I went out and I, I personally went out and bought. I didn't get them through Amazon. I went out and I searched and I looked and I searched and I said, "What would be a good present for Joe?" And I, I look at your psychological makeup and what you like and what you like to do and how you take things apart and how you want to build things and how you want to make things and your equations that you come up with, all of that stuff. Because he's a complex guy. And I give you those gifts and I sit them there and I say, "Okay, I'll see you later." Then I go out, maybe I go and I leave the country for about a year and I come back and I go to see and I open, knock on the door and I open the door and all the presents are still there. They're never opened. What does that tell me? That he doesn't appreciate the gift that I've given him. We do that with, with God. God gave us his son to die on the cross, to shed his blood for our sins so that the wrath of God came on him so it doesn't come on me. And all we have to do is receive that. All we got to do is take the bow off and open up the box and just say, yes, Lord, here I am. I am a sinner. I'm guilty, not because so-and-so made me, but because I am. 
Because I was born in sin. And therefore, God, I want to receive that gift. That's how God loves us. It's not about religion. It's not about stand up, sit down, kneel down, stand up, sit down, kneel down. It's not about that singing a song, not singing a song. It's not about that. It's about receiving his love. We cannot love with a perfect love, nor can we hate with a perfect hatred, but God can both love and hate perfectly because he is God. God can hate without sinful intent. He can hate the sinner in a perfectly holy way and still lovingly forgive the sinner at the moment that they repent and come to faith. So much stuff has crept into the church today. And I wonder, is that why people live half-hearted lives? Well, God will love me. You know, he's just going to love me. I, he'll forgive me. And you go out and do the same thing over and 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 over. Over and over, something is going on in my spirit right now. I'm just going to kind of turn to it. Over and over. Let me see if I can find that scripture. In 1 John chapter 2. Verse 8, he says, again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light is now shining. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness until now. Ooh. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. Chapter 3, verse 7, little children, let no man deceive you. But he that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Hello? Put that in the NLT version for me, please. I think it says it a little bit differently. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came, Jesus, to destroy the works of the devil. Now, I know when you turn the TV on, you hear the evangelist. You know, you see them. They got the, you know, two, $3,000 suits on. They got the Rolex on. They got all of that stuff on. And they tell you, come to Jesus and you'll get blessed. Come to Jesus and he'll make you rich. He'll make you healthy, wealthy, and wise. But you can't take that gospel that they preach to a third world country. I've been there. I've been to India. Just got back a few weeks ago. Where you go into a poor village, people live in these houses, one room houses, six, eight people in a one room house. You walk outside and the, and the refuse of, of, their, of, their, uh, of their dung and of their waste is on an open container. And you walk through with that heat and you can smell all of the smells and the stench, and it gets in your nostrils as you walk through these poor villages. I can't go there and tell them God wants them to have a Rolex. I can't go there and tell them God wants them to have a Mercedes. Hello? It doesn't fit. But what I can do is tell them there is a God who loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son. And let me tell you, they're coming to Jesus by the hundreds and not by the thousands. Muslims by the thousands are being converted to Christianity right now. Why? Because this Bible is true. Hallelujah. God's way is the truth and the life. And no man can come unto the Father except through Jesus.
I want God to love me, not to hate me. And how I do that is by surrendering myself, surrendering myself to him and the love and the gift that he's given me. You know, Christmas is coming. We celebrate the birth of Jesus, you know, and they got the little manger and they got the baby Jesus in there and, and they make a big thing about that only on the 25th of December. But wouldn't that be kind of unfair to my wife if I said, honey, I love you and on your birthday I'm going to come see you and I spend the day with her and then I leave her for the rest of the 364 days. What can happen? Maybe, Brother Tom, you can play something as I close. How about he, he's a good, good father? Do you know God as your father? As your dad? Someone that you can talk to at any time? And you know what's good? You know what's really cool about God? You know what's really cool about him? I love this about God. He already knows what's going on. You're not, you're not giving him new information like he's going, oh, wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> no, he already knows. Everything you think, everything you do, everywhere you go, he knows everything. He knows everything. And all you got to do is come to him and just say, Lord Jesus, here I am. I want to talk to those who are watching by Facebook today. All you got to do is say, Jesus, here I am. Admit that you're a sinner. Say, forgive me. I'm sorry for my sin. I admit that I'm a sinner. I, I admit that I've been in, in your wrath, but God, I ask you to have mercy on me. I ask you, Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart, be the Lord and master of my life. I believe, God, that you raised Jesus from the dead on the third day, and according to your word, I'm saved. Thank you. I give you praise. I give you glory, Lord. I give you honor. In Jesus' name. Now, let me pray for all of you. Father, I pray for everyone here this morning. God, that you will touch them and that you will speak to their hearts, Lord. I pray, God, that you will, by your spirit, keep each and every one of them in your perfect will. Father, as they walk out of this place, they won't forget you. But, God, they'll want a deeper, more physical, more spiritual relationship with you.